Welcome to First Baptist Church. Glad to have you all here with us this new year. Let's go ahead and open up our, our worship service with a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for bringing us to worship you. Lord, we thank you that we have your word to rely upon, Lord, to guide us and, and, and direct us, Lord, to guide us and to point us closer to Jesus Christ, to point us to live in a, in a way that would be most glorifying to you and to your name. Lord, I pray that as we have a special emphasis on that today, on your word, Lord, the word of God, I pray that we would be reminded of its truths, of its reliability, of its uh, infallibility, and that we would be, Lord, solidified in our faith in you from what we read in your word. It's the name of Jesus Christ that I pray. Amen. I'd like to start by reading 2 Corinthians 12, 9. If you would, please join me in standing as I read this. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. That is one of the joys that we have as a follower of Jesus Christ, is to rest on a firm foundation of Jesus Christ, who is our hope. Let's sing together as our first song, How Firm a Foundation. You're able to see on the screen where we are right now for our offering as we closed out last year. Let's go ahead and bring this before the Lord together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the continued giving of your church. Lord, I ask that as we, Lord, examine your word today, Lord, that we would be tender to your spirits moving in our lives. Lord, I pray that our, uh, our hearts would be tender, Lord, to your spirits moving, not just for an hour a week when we are here at worship together as First Baptists. I pray that as we spread out and as we go into our communities and our jobs, our families, that we would be tender to your spirits moving in our lives and how you draw us to you, but also how you draw us towards other people to serve them, love, give towards them, to give them Christ. Lord, let us be 
Lord, tender to these things, your spirit's moving, but that, that we would take action beyond just what we know to be right, that we would take action steps towards what we know to be right. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. The next song we're going to sing together, I Will Wait for You, from Psalm 130. I wait, my soul waits for the Lord, my hope is in His word, more than the watchman waits for dawn, my soul This morning, I'll read the first slide. If you would read the second slide along with me, and we'll continue on to the end. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, 
so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Let's sing together about our God, the uncreated one.
our God, Lord, we thank you for the goodness that you showed to us. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are Lord, blessed to call you our Father. Lord, the goodness you showed to us, not just through Jesus Christ, but through the graces that sometimes we take advantage of every day, even the small things, Lord. Lord, I ask that we would recognize you as, Lord, not just creator, but author of our lives. Lord, worthy of praise, worthy of glory in it, from every aspect of how we live our lives, how we choose to live every single day. Lord, as we are about to hear Pastor Pete Lord, come up and, and preach from the word of God this morning, Lord, I pray that this next song would be true of us, Lord, that you would take your word, take these truths from your word and plant them deep inside us, Lord, shape and fashion us in your likeness. Lord, that the light of Christ might be seen in our acts of, of love and our deeds of faith. Lord, let us, Lord, seek, go out of our way, not to accidentally, Lord, become more like Jesus Christ, but to intentionally, Lord, to purpose in our lives and in our hearts to direct ourselves towards Jesus Christ. So it's no longer us who live, but Christ who lives in us and through us. It's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. If you would join me when you're able to one last time in standing, let's sing together our final song before the message, Speak, O Lord. are bringing back junior or children's church, whatever you choose to call it. So children are now dismissed, ages four to eight. If you go to the back of the auditorium, Leah and Megan are going to be there. You can follow them downstairs.
Excellent singing. Take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 4. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 4. I want to make one comment before um, we get into the message. Um, and that is, um, Pastor Will mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I want to praise God for how God has provided for us this year. Um, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, we have ended the year in a positive financially, which with everything going on and, and we've lost some people, we've had some people move. That's the answer of prayer. In fact, the number up there isn't even totally accurate. We ended the year with a positive $8,000. So I just want to thank you for being obedient and continuing to give to the church. And I encourage you to continue that practice through 2022. Matthew chapter 4 is where we'll be in a moment. <clears throat> My very first uh, mission or service trip that I was a part of when I came here to First Baptist was about 15 and a half years ago. Um, some of the people who went on the trip still serve in the church today. Some of them are moms and dads. But uh, we went, to, uh, as the, the teen ministry, we went to Florida I know that doesn't sound like much of a mission trip, but it was. Uh, we went to Florida to serve at a place called D&D &D Homes. Uh, it is a ministry. It's a beautiful organization. It's a ministry in, in Florida where they own a, uh, a bunch of houses, and uh, missionaries can come when they're home in the States. They can come and stay there free of charge, and they have also clothing they can get and, and food and other things just to help them with that. And so we were there for a week and we served helping in different areas around the grounds. And uh, it was a great trip. There was many memorable things from that trip. One of the most memorable things about that trip had nothing to do with serving. But I want to tell you about it. I probably told you about it back then because it was humorous and we probably gave a report and told you about it. But um, as a reward for working very hard on the trip, I took the teens uh, for a day uh, to Animal Kingdom, which is part of the Disney family. And uh, one of the young men on that trip uh, had never been on a roller coaster. In fact, he was terrified of roller coasters. He did not want to go on a roller coaster at all, but he decided he wanted to spend the day with me. And so I said, well, sorry, you're going on a roller coaster. And so right away we went to um, the, the biggest roller coaster, which at that time was brand new. It's called Mount Everest. And, uh, and because it was brand new and the biggest, the line was pretty long. I think we waited for over an hour to get on the ride. And the entire time in line, this young man kept trying to tell me over and over again why he wasn't going to actually go on the ride. He kept whining, I'm not going to do this. It's too scary. I can't do this. And, and I kept saying, no, you're gone. You're gone. I didn't give him an out. When he finally realized that he didn't have any way out, he started to uh, just kind of talk to himself. And after a while, I said, what are you saying? So he said it out loud. He goes, he started saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can, and he said it over and over and over again. Finally, we went up on the ride, and he was able to do the ride, which that's a whole other story reserved for a different time that's quite humorous in itself. But I say all that because of this, that that verse, though maybe he was saying it a little bit in jest, that verse that he probably memorized as a young boy in Awana many years before, that verse in that moment, though it was something that was not that important, was, a, was something that came back to him, to his memory, and it was a point of encouragement for him. Today, we are going to start a series called The Marks of a Believer. Jesus commands each of us as his disciples to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, and to follow him. And with that comes a number of responsibilities that God gives to us as children of God, of disciples. And, and, and if you remember a few weeks back, those of you who are here on a particular Sunday, I gave out a survey and I asked you to, to fill this survey out. And if you remember, the survey was marks of a disciple. And I had you fill that out. And from that survey, I want to speak on, uh, over the course of the next four weeks, I want to speak on a few areas that I think maybe we as a church have some things to work on. And I don't say that just because I observed it. I say it because the survey says so, which means you say so. The first area I want to talk about is scripture memorization. 
I want to give you a few stats from that. Uh, there was, I think, 48 questions on the survey, and of the 48 questions, the question regarding scripture memory was the second worst response based on averages. So let me give you the, the averages. Now, if you remember on that, there was a question that asked of how, how much do you consistently uh, memorize scripture? There was every, everything from almost all the time down to rarely. And so you had to put into one of those categories. And so when I tabulated the top two areas, which are basically I um, some, most of the time and all of the time memorize, uh, it came down to uh, less than... 10% of us here at this church memorize scripture on a consistent basis. Uh, 53% of, ch- of our church claim that they rarely, if ever, memorize scripture. Now, I say rarely, if ever, because the category said rarely, but uh, uh, if you put that, then you're probably saying most likely I hardly ever, if ever, memorize scripture. I want you to think about that for a second. 53% of us. Now, if you haven't, you know, thought about that for a moment, that's not good numbers. And so that's why I'm going to speak on this today. We have to ask ourselves then, if, if only 50, if less than, excuse me, uh, 50% of people are, are even ever possibly memorizing scripture, and if over 50% are rarely, if ever, memorizing scripture here in this church, then we have to ask ourselves the question, why? And then maybe the question we have to ask is, is scripture memory even that important? Oh, I understand. We have Awana here. And so those in Awana go, yeah, I got to memorize scripture. But, but I want to go beyond that, okay? Because majority of the people in this room are not in Awana. <laughs> so is scripture memory that important? Or is scripture memory even commanded in scripture? I want to give you a, a quote here. Chuck Swindoll said this. And I'm, I'm showing my cards right away here. You're going to, right away, I'm going to tell you what I think of that question. Chuck Swindoll said this, I know of no other single practice in all of the Christian life more rewarding, practically speaking, than memorizing scripture. No other single exercise pay greater spiritual dividends than memorizing scripture. Your prayer life will be strengthened. Your witnessing will be much more effective. Your attitudes and outlooks will begin to change. Your mind will become more alert and observant. Your confidence and assurance will be enhanced. Your faith will be solidified. Martin Luther, the great reformer, memorized a great deal of scripture. Here's the amazing thing is Martin Luther devoured the Bible in a day. He memorized much of the Bible in a day when people could earn doctorates of theology without even reading the Bible. In fact, one of, one of Luther's fellow professors did not even own a Bible, and he earned a doctorate of theology. But Martha con- consumed it. He read it. He memorized it. He knew so much of the Bible that when he, uh, when he came to the point that he realized that it was by faith that we are saved and not by works, and, and God began to open his eyes to the understanding of justification, he said this, whereby I ran through the scriptures from memory in order to confirm what I had found. So we come to Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew chapter 4, and I'm going to read to you verses 1 through 11. And though this is the main text, we're going to be all over the place today, uh, but I want you to hear what Matthew 4 says. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil spoke 
uh, took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kings of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him and behold, the angels came and were ministering to him. Let's pray. God, I am thankful for the opportunity to preach this message. Lord, you know my heart, and you know this is an area that I myself need to work on. It's an area that I struggle with. Lord, I desire it. I attempt it. Then sometimes I fail. Lord, so I pray that you'll help us as we go through this, that we will be open and honest with you and with ourselves. We ask that you work through this passage, and we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Here we find the, what I think is the best example of using scripture memory, and it's Jesus himself. So today I want to walk through what the Bible says, and specifically the life of Jesus as an example of scripture memory. And at the end I have a challenge for you, and I want you to think about and pray about, even as I'm speaking, if you will accept the challenge that I will give you at the end. But I want to look at a few things and, and talk about the area of Bible memorizations. First of all, I want to look at that Jesus is our example of scripture memory. The most important reason for us to memorize scripture is because Jesus memorized scripture. Jesus memorized scripture. The goal of every disciple of, G of Christ should be to become like him, to be like Christ. We're not merely here to just fill out. We were talking about this in Sunday school. In our Sunday school class, we're going through the topic of prayer. We were talking about sometimes in prayer, it's just kind of like another checklist item. I got to pray. I got to pray. So, man, I got this list. And sometimes I think that we think Christianity is merely, I got to do these things. And if I do them, then I'm pleasing God or I'm pleasing a preacher or obeying what, what he has to say. Instead, the goal of every Christian, every Christian, should be like Christ. In fact, it even goes farther than that. Notice what it says in Romans. We know this, we know Romans 8 28 well. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. We love that verse. For all those who are called according to his purpose. But notice the next verse. For those whom he did foreknow. For those that God looked down and said, I choose you. I knew that you were going to be my son, my daughter in Christ. For those of you who he foreknow, he also predestined. And what did he predestine? What, he did, what did God predetermine that you were going to do? That you were going to be what? Conformed to the image of his son. So therefore, when we look at that, our goal in life is to become like Christ. So how better to know what Christ is and, to, and to, to be like Christ than studying Christ's life? And so when we talk about scripture memory, the number one reason to memorize scripture is because Christ memorized scripture. And I want to see Christ used it in two distinct ways. First of all, Christ used scripture memory in his personal life. We see that most clearly here in, in Matthew chapter 4. And, and I don't need to go into detail of this story, but uh, Jesus was led by uh, the Spirit. Notice it says he's led by the Spirit. He wasn't led by uh, the temptation. He was led by the Spirit. And in the midst of that, he's, he's fasting 40 days and 40 nights as he gets ready to go into his ministry. Uh, isn't that amazing? The Son of God fasted and prayed. That's a whole other one that we'll get to. He fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. You know, it's easy to kind of just pass it off. Well, he's, he's God. Doesn't he just do anything? No, he still took the time to pray and contemplate what God had for him. And in the midst of that, in the midst of hunger, the tempter, Satan, came. And he tempted him with three things which mirror... How, how, what the same things he tempted Eve with. But he tempted him with three things. First of all, he says, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. Oh, man, that makes sense, right? He's hungry. And how does Jesus respond? He responds by quoting scripture. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of, the mouth of God. The devil goes on again, takes him to the, the holy city, sets him on the pinnacle, and he says, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down. And then Satan himself quotes from scripture and says, if you do that, the angels will come and they'll sweep you up and they'll save you. And, and Jesus says again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to test. 
The third time, the devil comes and takes him to a high mountain and he shows him all the kingdoms of the world. And he says, if you will bow down to me, I will give you all these. And Jesus again quotes from scripture, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Every time that he was tempted personally, Jesus responded by quoting scripture. He did not have some sort of big scroll with him that he unrolled and, and you know, he had to quickly find, go to the index and find uh, where, where these verses were. No, they were, they were there in his head. And when he was tempted, he responded immediately by quoting these scriptures. I know right away, some of you are thinking this, so I'm going to address this. Some of you are thinking, isn't he all-knowing? Did he really have to memorize scripture? I mean, if he is God, that means he knows all things. So did, did he really have to memorize scripture? Well, I'm going to take you to a couple passages where I think, well, I, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, but I, oh, I don't think so. I think he had to memorize scripture. First of all, we go to uh, uh, Philippians chapter 2, and this is a fantastic passage talking about what Jesus Christ did for us, and and we're supposed to follow his examples, the idea of that passage. It says, who, that's talking about Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, though he was God, did not count equality God a thing to be grasped. In other words, he did not hold on to it tightly, but instead he let it go. And he emptied himself. He became the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. I believe that Jesus Christ, when he came to earth, he emptied himself. That does not mean that he, had, that he ceased to become God. No, that does not mean that he didn't have the ability to do uh, what he did as God. No, we see he performed miracles. But he emptied himself. He became, came to earth. He didn't come and born on Christmas Day and suddenly, uh, you know, he knew everything that an adult knew. He just kept it inside. You say, how do you know that? Look what it says in Luke chapter 2 and, and verse uh, 52. It says, and Jesus increased. He grew in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and man. If he, if he uh, was all-knowing, all that, as a human at that moment, he wouldn't have to grow, but he grew. And so I believe that Jesus memorized scripture. We don't see much of his childhood, but I believe that he uh, would have gone in, to the temple, and we do see that at one point, but I think he would have gone to the temple and on a regular basis. He would have heard the scripture and he would have applied it. He probably uh, would have sat under the, the teachings of a, a rabbi and would have learned, and as was very common for Jewish boys to do at the time, to sit under a rabbi and, and be taught uh, the, the scriptures. And I believe that we see this from Christ. We see other times in Jesus' life, personal life, when he brought out scripture. Remember when Jesus was on the cross and he's, and, and he's standing there and he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Which was actually a quotation from Psalm 22. Or, or later on in, on the cross when he's about ready to breathe, breathe his last breath and Jesus cries out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, which is a quote from Psalm 31. So I don't think it's beyond reason to think that while Jesus was on the cross and, and, and he was being tortured and he was facing incomprehensible pain, that he was running through the Psalms in his mind. He was going through them. Psalms that he had learned and he had memorized. And Jesus used scripture memory in his ministry life, but also Jesus used scripture memory, and I mean in his personal life, but also in his ministry life. And I could give you many of these examples, but I'm not going to because of time. But he... Uh, yeah, numerous examples of this. For example, here's one in, in Matthew when he was uh, asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he says this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. 
Okay? This was uh, something that came from Deuteronomy chapter 6 when God was telling the people as they go into the promised land, here's how you're to live. You're to take, you're to love God with everything that you have. And then you're to take his word. And what does Deuteronomy 6 tell us? He says you're supposed to uh, live the word, but you're supposed to memorize the word. And Jesus here quotes from it. Later, uh, at another point in his ministry, when, when he's asked about marriage, he says this, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. He, had to, uh, he took that from Genesis chapter 2, where God was describing what marriage was, and it says the same exact quote. So Jesus used it. And we could go on and on. When Jesus described himself, oftentimes he would quote from the Old Testament. When he talked about his mission on earth, he would quote from the Old Testament. And so whether it was his public life or his private life, he was characterized by uh, frequent quotations of Scripture. And so therefore, here's what I say to us, is therefore we should memorize Scripture as well. It should be something that we do on a regular basis. We can quote scripture in our lives in the same way. We can quote, quote, quote scripture in, in our personal lives. And this is a huge one. When you're tempted, just like Jesus, you can quote scripture. When you're on a roller coaster and you're scared, you can quote scripture. We daily deal with spiritual warfare. What is spiritual warfare? You know, I think oftentimes we have this idea that, you know, you know, I go, I'm driving down the road and I'm trying to get somewhere and I get a flat tire. That's spiritual warfare. It may be. But if you study scripture, there's, there's a few key times when Satan come, gets involved where we actually see what, spiritual, what a spiritual battle is. And, and there's an interesting theme through it all. Let me give you, kind of walk through that with you. In Genesis, when, when Satan appeared to Eve through a serpent, what was he trying to get Eve to uh, struggle with? He was trying to get Eve to doubt God. Did God really say? Another example is you go uh, later in the Bible to the book of Job, and uh, Job is an interesting one because we don't see exactly uh, what uh, Satan uh, did uh, as far as like what he was trying to get him to think. But he, he goes and he's talking to God, and he, Satan says, hey, I've been roaming through the earth looking for people, and, and uh, basically he's implying, I, I don't see anyone here that's righteous. And God says, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan says, well, yeah, I mean, he follows you, but, I mean, he's a wealthy man. He has all these things you provided for him. And God says, okay, do what you will. Just don't touch him. So you know the story of Job. God allowed this to happen, but Satan took all of his kids, and, and they were all killed. And, and Satan took all of his wealth, and it was all destroyed. And now he's left with just himself and, and his wife, and, and uh, Satan goes back to God and says, hey, I've been roaming throughout the earth, and, and he says, have you considered my servant Job? He says, yeah, but you've, you've protected him, and God says, do what you will, spare his life. And so Satan goes, and he causes uh, this, these boils to come over Job's life, and he's sitting there, and, and Job is miserable. And really, what, Job, uh, what, what Satan is trying to do is trying to get Job to the point where he denies God. But what does it say? But on all this Job sinned not, nor charge God foolishly. We see this example in Matthew uh, chapter 4 where Satan comes to Christ himself, the Son of God. Satan knew he was the Son of God. And Satan comes to him, and notice how he words things. Look, at, uh, look there in verse 3. He says, if you are the Son of God. What's he trying to do? He's trying to cast, cast doubt. We see in verse 6, similar thing. If you are the Son of God. You see, what Satan does when he tries to tempt is he tries to get us to doubt God. To doubt God's plan. To doubt God is who he says he is. I mean, this is a huge temptation today. Even for us as believers, when we go out and we, and we begin to ask, man, is God really hearing my prayer? 
man, is, is, is God really in charge? I mean, look at the world, and it's hard to imagine God's in charge. And Satan is trying to get us to doubt. And so scripture memory is a great way to battle that type of warfare. And, and to get us to fight against that. So when that happens, we must do what Jesus did, which was use the word of God that we have memorized to counter Satan's truth. But not only in areas of temptation, but also we can use scripture memory in other areas. Like, for example, we can use scripture memory in our prayer life. A couple ways that I see that. First of all, we, we look at uh, uh, the, the model prayer, the Lord's Prayer. And, and we can use that to understand the way God anticipated for us to pray. And, and what does he say? Our, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our prayers should start with praise. They should start with adoration of who God is. Thy kingdom come. In other words, there's, there's a yielding to who God is. God, it's not my will, it's your will. Uh, give us this day our daily bread. A plead for God to work in, in, in our needs, in our, not our wants, our needs. And lead us not into temptation. God, I pray that you will protect me today in my walk with you. But not only, I think, can, prayer, can scripture memory be used uh, to help us in, in our uh, understanding what prayer is, but also in our communication to God. I challenge you to make this a part of your prayer life. That as you pray, quote back scripture to God. Jesus did that. Quote back scripture to God. Remind God, not because he needs it, because it's good for us to rehearse of who he is and what he has done and the promises he has made. We can memorize scriptures to, to praise God. Verses like Psalm 8, 1, where it says, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Remind us of who God is. But even beyond that, we all have specific areas in our life where we struggle. Areas that are constant areas of issue. Uh, in Hebrews, it talks about those besetting sins, those things that creep in all the time. Here's one of the things that I think the best thing that you can do for your personal struggles. You know, right now, in your head, think of that one area in your life that is the hardest, that you struggle with the most. Find passages of scripture about that and memorize it. For example, if you have a problem with anger, memorize Ephesians 4.26. Be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Or if you have a problem with your tongue, Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only what is good for building up as it fits the occasion and may give grace to those who hear. Or maybe you have a problem against uh, bitterness or anger or, or uh, uh, unforgiveness towards other people. Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ's sake forgave you. Or maybe you're saying, I got a problem with all of those. Then just memorize Ephesians 4. <laughs> so, if you are looking for a good place to start memorizing scripture, one of the best things you can do is identify an area of need in your life Search for scriptures that are, talk about that need and memorize that passage. And, and it'll be such an encouragement to you. Maybe, like I said, your area is, is that you haven't forgiven someone. There, I'm not going to address this one in this series, but one of the questions that was on that survey was, is there someone in this church that you have not, that you have not forgiven? There was about 25% uh, of you that said, at least in some way, there was someone that you have not forgiven. That shouldn't be as a church. And we look at this passage and he says, forgive. I love the quote, forgiven people forgive people. We have been forgiven by God, so we have to forgive. Maybe that's an area you're struggling with, and you need to find passages of Scripture that bring that to mind when you're struggling. But not only can uh, Scripture memory aid in our personal life, but also it can aid in our ministry life. Just as Jesus constantly quoted Scripture in his public ministry opportunities, we have numerous occasions to use verses that we have memorized to serve God as we minister to the place that God calls us to minister. It can help in outreach and evangelism. 
When, you, when you're uh, talking to someone, maybe uh, you're, you're in a store or maybe you're talking to someone you work with and, and, and you begin to share the gospel, then all of a sudden you go, oh, I don't know. I don't have my Bible on me. I can't remember. Memorize it. Memorize the, the Romans Road plan of salvation. So you can quote it at any moment. It'll help you with outreach. It'll help you with parenting. Oh, man, this, this is the case a lot of times for me as a parent. When I, uh, I'm talking to my kids and I, I, I quote scripture, I think of a verse and, and I talk about that verse and, and, and it'll help you with parenting. It'll help you uh, with preaching and teaching. It'll help you with disciple making. It'll help you with the ministry of encouraging others. It's, it's much better to quote a promise of scripture and a promise of God than to give someone our advice. Scripture memory. Just as Jesus continually quoted and used the word of God in his personal life and in his ministry life, we can have countless opportunities to use scripture that we have memorized in our own life. As we wrap up in the next few moments, what I want to do is I want to give you some practical observations about scripture memory. Practical observations, then I'm going to end with a challenge. First of all, we need to understand the object, objections against scripture memory. I don't think any Christian doubts the necessity of memorizing scripture. I don't believe that. I believe with you're honest, you know that God wants you to do that. God has commanded you to know his word. But many of us have various reasons why we think we can. Remember, 53% of us say we rarely, if ever, memorize scripture. If you bring in those who say sometimes, it's 80%. We know that we should memorize scripture, but very few Christian adults actually do. Many of us have all the excuses lined up, don't we? I don't have time. Uh, uh, I, I'm just not good at memorizing things. I'm too old to memorize things. All of us have used one or more of those, ex uh, of those excuses. And like many things that Satan uses to tempt us, there is element of truth in each of those objections. I know that we're all busy. I know that some of you, man, you are so busy. You're running here, there, everywhere. Some of you, man, you, you've got a business you're running, so, and, and you're just, you're always constantly moving. Some of you, man, you're, you're a mom of many kids, and you don't have time to stop and memorize. Some of you, you're just, you're, you're involved in, in multiple jobs. Some of you, and I could go on and on and on. We're busy. That's, that's just an excuse. I know that not everyone is as good as memorizing scripture as other people are. There are people that have photographic memories, and most of us don't. Some of us have to work really hard at it. Some of us have to take the time to memorize. But I challenge you to do it. I know it's also true that, that some of us, some people, as they get older, as we age, we lose our ability to memorize things. I mean, children are way better at it. That's why they can sit down and memorize verses in Awana just quickly. And we struggle through it. But those things are just no excuse to not memorize Scripture. I mean, there are other areas we could use that excuse. Oh, man, someone might say, hey, I find it really hard uh, to, to stay morally pure. So would we suggest that they don't even try? No. Well, I find it hard to memorize. That's not an excuse. That's not an excuse for us to not memorize. In fact, I, I, I um, go as far as to say this, that we actually do memorize things on a regular basis. I mean, you know your computer uh, login password. You know your locker combination. You know your ATM PIN number. You know the number of your favorite TV channel. And the list goes on and on. For many of us, the problem is not that we can't memorize. It's that we haven't made it a priority to memorize. 
It's that we really don't believe Psalm 19 when it says that God's word is more to be desired than gold. We think other things are more desirable. You know, maybe you say, I'm, I'm getting older and it's harder for me to remember things as I get older. I, I, I understand that. But you know, re- new research has been released recently that found that older Americans can improve their memory in as short as 14 days by just simply making lifestyle changes, including doing memory exercises. It's, it's, it's real. A number of years ago, my mom started doing uh, um, puzzles like Sudoku and stuff. And the reason was is because she would told it would impre- increase her memory and help her brain. We can do those things and it'll help. So it is true that many of us can, and even as we get older, memorize scripture. So the question is not really our ability, but our obedience. Second practical thing that we want to talk through is we need to, here, here's my suggestion, is attempt to memorize larger portions of scripture rather than several uh, 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 assorted verses. Uh, There are uh, many individual verses that we may not want to memorize, and that might be effective for you, but uh, if you have tried to do that, it's, it's hard. But I would say this, if you would memorize, and maybe it takes you a long time, that's fine, but if you would memorize an entire chapter, chunks of scripture, uh, it's, it's a lot of times better. Why? Because first of all, it flows more naturally from one verse to another, so it's easier for us to memorize when it's, it connects. And, and, and it's much easier to memorize a 20-verse chapter than it is to memorize 20 different verses. Plus, you get the benefit of knowing the context. I challenge you, if that's something that you want to do, do that. Third one, and this one's important, is find an accountability partner to help you with scripture memory. Tell someone, hey, go to someone. Maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's beyond that. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a, uh, somebody, it's a coworker that, that is a Christian. Or, or maybe it's, uh, and the list could go on. Maybe it's, maybe it's that you make it a project as a growth group. Hey, let's memorize scripture together. And I want to each week when we come here to growth group that we talk about it together. That we, we say, here, here's what I remember. And maybe we even quote it together. We look for ways to keep each other accountable. You know, accountability works in many ways. Many of you maybe have been a part of before of an accountability a number of years ago. Um, I was a part of an accountability group. It was a guy that I went to college with one day put on Facebook, hey, I want to lose weight and I can't do it alone. How many of you want to join me? And a bunch of us joined and, and uh, I, I remember doing that with him and, and it was that accountability of every, every Monday we had to put for, I don't remember how long it was, we had to put on Facebook, not public, but in our group, we had to put how much weight we had lost and, and all this stuff. It was accountability. Maybe you have accountability for other things, and why not uh, do it for scripture memory as well? Fourth one is listen to what you are memorizing can be helpful. Listening to what you are memorizing. Uh, I challenge you to do that. There are many ways to do that. I would say, I didn't put this on the survey, but I would say that the majority of the adults in this room have a smartphone. And so if you have a smartphone, you can easily have an app where you can listen to scripture. And so find a passage of scripture and listen to it over and over again. Or, even better, there are numerous today, and maybe you're not aware of this, but there are, I'm going to pull mine up. There are, there are numerous apps that you can get where they actually um, allow you to memorize, to help you memorize. Um, I have this one that I use called Verses. And basically what it is, is I enter, I put in the passage I want to memorize. So I was working through memorizing Psalm 51, verses 1 and 2. And it has different ways that you can do it. I mean, this, this is really great stuff, like that you can do this. Like a word bank, for those of you who want to do that style, where it'll give you all the words and you have to put them in order. Okay, or, or you can just sit there and listen to it. Now, it's kind of, you know, um, I don't know. It's kind of robotic. I don't know if you can hear that, but you know, but you can listen to it, and so you can listen to it over and over again. Or one author suggests, and um, now I got to get back into what I was using this for. There we go. One author suggests that you could actually um, you could actually record yourself saying the verse because when you hear yourself saying it, helps you memorize it better because you have a certain cadence and a certain tone with which you use it, and so after a while, you can quote it back by just listening to yourself. 
These are practical things that I'm trying to give you. And then the final one is review constantly. Someone said that there is a threefold key to scripture memorization. You ready for this? Review, review, review. <laughs> Many of us could look at a verse right now. I mean, you could take up your Bible right now. You could look at a verse. You could read it over five, six, seven, eight times. And, and you could then turn and say it to the person next to you without looking. But then an hour from now, you can't remember the verse. So we need to constantly review. Constantly looking back. Maybe it's, it's in your short-term memory, but it's not in your long-term memory. And those verses that you have in long-term memory, here's the thing. I can pull back verses that, yes, I've read numerous times since then, but I memorized when I was seven. Okay? I, I have the type of memory, and this is weird, it's not photographic, so don't think that, but it's, it's, I have the type of memory that when I m memorize something, it's based on where it is on the page. How many of you are like that? Anyone else? Okay. So I remember, there are verses that I remember, and I can still see where it was on my Awana book in my head because I memorized it so well. And, and that is uh, this idea of constantly reviewing. And the more we review, the more that we have the added benefit, not only of having the Word of God in our mind, but constantly hearing the Word of God, constantly allowing it to flow through our mind and where God can use, allow us to use it to minister to others and to ourselves. So with that in mind, here's my specific challenge for you. And this is, this is a simple challenge. And here's what I'm going to say is if you can go above and beyond this challenge, please do. Okay? But here's my challenge for you as, as people that are a part of this church. My challenge for you is that you memorize one verse a week for, for 2022. One verse a week. If you could do that, you get to the end of the year, you have 52 additional verses. That would be fantastic. One, maybe some of you can do more. But I do not believe there's not a person in here that could memorize one verse a week. I don't believe that for a second. Memorize one verse a week. What we're going to do is each week in the bulletin, we're going to have a verse of the week. You can choose to memorize that or you can say, I want to find my own. I'm okay with that. But find that verse and memorize it. Okay, memorize whatever that verse is. One verse a week. Um, it, it, and if you want to memorize something else, if you want to memorize a chapter, go for it. If you want to, you know, be big and think I want to memorize the whole book of the New Testament, go for it. Whatever you want to do, just I'm um, challenging to do, do that. So here's what I'm going to do is I want to put feet to this. It's easy to say it. It's hard to do something about it. So up front, you'll see here on the, on the, the table here, you'll see two papers, and they're both identical, so it doesn't matter which. And so I, what I want you to do, if you're saying, I will commit to memorizing one verse a week, then come up here and write your name down uh, uh, in a moment. And, and uh, I challenge you to do that. Um, and and I, what I'll do is I'll take that list, and I'll be praying for you, and I probably from time to time will remind you. How are you doing? If you're watching online, you're not able to be here, um, thankfully you can join us. Text me, call me, email me, Facebook me, whatever you need to do to tell me you want to be on the list, and I'll put you on that. We as a church need to take seriously this, this, this idea of scripture memorization. This is not just a thing for kids. This is a thing for those who are disciples of Christ. Disciples of Christ. The truth is, is we can't do anything in our Christian life on our own. We were, uh, we, we were saved by grace, and we have to live by the grace of God. But we have to do everything in our power to infuse into our life the Word of God. And Scripture memory is, a, is, is one of the best. So I challenge you to do that. I'm going to have a word of prayer. After that, um, Pastor will come up and lead us in our final song. I challenge you. Here's my challenge, because this is really where it takes some courage and some guts. I challenge you, if you say, I commit to this, to come down during the song and write your name. Okay? Don't wait to the end, because you'll forget. Okay? Come down to the front if that's a challenge. I'm not, I'm not trying to bully you into it. If you don't think that's what God wants you to do, then don't do it. But if that's what God wants you to do, then I challenge you to do that during, this, during our closing song. Let's pray. God, I thank you for all that you have done. And Lord, I pray that you will help us as believers to understand the importance of studying and memorizing your word. 
And Lord, I pray that you will help us to make a commitment this year as a church. And I think that we will see a radical impact that it will have on us if we will memorize scripture. I thank you. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. We are about to sing this song. As Pastor Pete mentioned, if you feel like you want to sign up for this, just come up right while we're singing. Put your name down there. I'm putting my name on afterwards because I need just as much as everyone else to memorize scripture, and I'm looking forward to this fun challenge. So please, if you would, join me in standing. We'll sing together our closing song. This is the word of God. This is the Father, thank you for bringing us to worship you. I thank you for the encouragement and the challenge, Lord, from your word about the word of God and the importance of it, Lord. Thank you that we had a Savior who led by example, Lord, who took your word to heart, who memorized it, who made it a part of his everyday life, Lord, and we are called to do the same. So, Lord, let us take this challenge from your word, about your word, to heart. Lord, I pray that everyone who came down sign their name, even those watching, even those who didn't sign their names, Lord. I pray that we would take seriously our need for your word every single day and that we would take this challenge and use it as an opportunity to plant your word deep in our hearts, make it immovable no matter what this world may uh, bring towards us, no matter what culture brings or the shifts that happen as we've seen the last couple of years, Lord. I pray that your word would be cemented so deep, Lord, that no matter what comes, it's there permanently, that we can rely on you, Lord, to speak to us through that. Lord, give us the strength, and it's in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. There is no announcement video today, and no announcements, so you are dismissed. <laughs>